Hello, my name is Harun Raja. I'm the Chief Flight Test Engineer at Marshall Aerospace. Um, prior to Marshall, I was in the Royal Air Force as an engineering officer on Nimrod, MR2, Harriers, uh, Typhoon, then a graduate at Empire Test Pilot School, and then flight test into Marshall in 2015. Marshall flight test team um, consists of test pilots, flight test engineers, air load masters, flight engineers and trial support staff. We have the ability to conduct all experimental, developmental flight tests, both civilian and military. And we cover everything from new aircraft modifications all the way through to post-maintenance flight checks. In this video, we're going to be describing how we conduct a flight test sortie, a typical post-maintenance sortie. The example is a C-130J, and this is an abbreviated test schedule. And we're going to explain how we do what we do and why we do it. This particular sortie was a ex-Royal Air Force C-130 Mark V, which the company has uh, prepared for a new customer. And this was the culmination of a series of flight test sorties to ensure the aircraft is safe and uh, capable and ready, fit for purpose for the new customer. In this video, we're starting the aircraft ready to uh, taxi and air test. Of note, every manufacturer, every aircraft type has subtly different start procedures. The key thing here is to start the engines one at a time, make sure everything is stable, settled before we move on until we have everything running and then we taxi. Here we see the aircraft taxiing to the runway for, our, uh, for the start of our sortie. During the taxi, we'll be doing small checks on steering, brakes, also just general checks of the flight deck in terms of what we're displaying in terms of instrumentation. We'll be setting up the navigation for the sortie and we'll be making sure the kit is all online and ready to go. At the end of the runway, when we get there, we'll be doing some high power engine checks. Uh, we do those on the runway because they generate a lot of thrust and it's just a safer environment to do it. So we, we have the runway sterilized, no one else is using it at the time. And we just put all of the engines up to power and, and make sure everything is stable and good. And when we're happy, we get permission, we release and we go. During this phase in the climb, we're checking engine performance, we're checking displays, we're checking indications. We're also having a look at the autopilot to make sure that's working as advertised. And we're, we're getting ready onto condition for our, our first set of testing. The footage is shot from the third crew position, which is immediately behind the front two pilots in a center seat. Um, shooting the footage on this sortie with our air load master. Uh, we carry with us an air load master um, for all test sorties to, to operate the ramp and door and to look at things in the cargo compartment for us. Different types of Hercules have different crew configurations. The legacy Hercules, we carry a flight engineer to operate those controls. Also for more complex flight test sorties, uh, experimental developmel, developmental category testing, we carry our flight test engineers to act as test directors and coordinate the activity. Um, within Marshall Flight Test, our air load masters and our flight engineers also are team leaders and senior technicians in the hangar, which gives us a huge advantage because we go flying as part of a team. They, they witness any issues firsthand, they witness any faults, uh, they can help advise um, small niggles that we might see that may be a result of the maintenance. And they can take those faults direct back to their teams post sortie should they exist and make sure they get rectified quickly and efficiently. The C-130J is capable in, in all weather conditions, uh, has a huge operating range. For testing, we only operate and test day VMC, so clear of cloud, good visibility, as low turbulence as possible. And the reason is, our testing is, is a science experiment in effect. We need to set up an experiment and get good data, good numbers that will then be compared with what the aircraft should do. And we want to eliminate all possible interference. Also, from a safety perspective, key is that should we have have malfunctions or issues in the sortie. We want to position ourselves in the best possible scenario in order to recover, uh, worst case recover and get back to base quickly, which is achievable more easily in good weather. So here we're operating the main cargo door and ramp. This is a key part of testing. This is clearly an important operational ability of the aircraft. We've got the air load master in the back who's tethered safely to the floor and we will command the door and ramp open from the front and he'll be looking to make sure the, the, the door opens correctly, that everything locks into place. He'll then do a visual inspection to make sure there are no leaks or seeps. Meanwhile, in the front, we're interested in the indications and ensuring that nothing 
you know, nothing concerning is being displayed to us in the front. Once we're happy, we'll command the door closed and we'll do the same process in reverse. Here we see quite an important part of the test, which is engine shutdowns and relights. So clearly we want to give confidence to the customer that should an engine shut down, firstly, it will shut down safely and into a safe, secure position. And then importantly, we can restart safely and if safe to do so and continue. The, this, the engines are shut down one at a time sequentially. Uh, from a safety perspective, that leaves three serviceable engines, which is plenty to get this aircraft back home safely and recovered if we can't relight. The sequence of events tends to be uh, pulling the fire handle up, up on top. The engine will lose fuel flow and shut down. A number of things happen for which we take timings. So the blade, the propeller blade should all feather within a certain timing. Things should stop rotating within a certain timing. So our loadmaster and co-pilot at this point will be looking at different parameters with stopwatches and making notes of timings that are pre-prescribed as we go down the process, all the way down to the engine stopped. When we're happy, we check everything looks safe to restart. There's no indication of any issue. Uh, and then we go for a restart one at a time and it's the reverse process. We then have a, a number of timings, different stages of the engine startup, all have tolerances from the manufacturer. Uh, and we look at how long we take to execute each phase as it, as it runs through its startup cycle. The C-130J has a, a FADEC, so fully automated digital engine controls. So it, it runs through the sequences automatically. So the key for us is just observing the different points on that startup and looking at the timings to make sure that the, the computer effectively is commanding the engine to do the right thing. Uh, once we're up and running again and we're happy, um, we make sure we're in a safe place and we repeat for the next engine. And we do all of them one at a time uh, until we're happy. So during the shutdown and relight testing, as with any phase of testing during our, uh, our post-maintenance, our you know, experimental, developmental testing, th there's always a possibility of something not performing as advertised or, or something going wrong. In the event of an engine, should the engine not restart, the way we position these sorties are, if there's no immediate threat, there's no fire, there's no danger to crew, we'll shut down and leave the engine shut down and secured and just recover back here to Cambridge. If there's a more immediate threat, then we'll, we'll pick uh, an alternative option within you know, immediate range of where we happen to be that has appropriate firefighting and you know, rescue capabilities and we'll, we'll just put the aircraft down. Um, things do have a tendency to, to fail, um, and that's part of the reason for flight testing in the first place. Um, in a serious manner, not so much. It tends to be small system issues or small indication issues. Um, we always err on the side of caution. If we have any such issues during a sortie, we will tend to terminate and come back to the main operating base to have a chat with the technicians and, um, and then relaunch again once, once rectified. So here we're on approach back to Cambridge. What's interesting in this shot is we're approaching Cambridge um, in the opposite direction to the runway in use. So we're approaching on runway 23. Um, the runway in use is 05. The reason there is we're testing the instrument landing system on the aircraft and at Cambridge there's only that facility on runway 23. So we, we get permission, the air traffic um, sanitise the airspace and we approach, we make an approach in the wrong direction. We'll go around as in the video and then what we'll do is we'll execute a teardrop uh, manoeuvre to then be lined up with the correct runway in the opposite direction to then come down to land. In this video, we're on approach to land at runway 05 at Cambridge, um, final stage of the sortie, clearly we're gonna land. Part of the testing um, will, could be a max break, a max effort landing. We don't execute in this instance, but that would, that would involve putting the aircraft into max reverse and maximum effort on the brakes. We normally split the duties, and in this case, one of the pilots will be holding all of the force on the brakes. It's quite a significant force that's trying to throw the feet off the rudder pedals, a bit like anti-brake systems in cars uh, and motorbikes. We'll come to a stop, ensure everything is indicating safe, the brakes haven't overheated or overtemped, and then we'll taxi back to the allocated slot.